I'm going to simplify this radical, the, the square root of 108. Simplify means that we're going to put it in simplified radical form rather than just take the square root and round the decimal. So we know that uh, 2 will go into this uh, 54 times. So 2 times 54. And uh, we break it down a little bit more. We're going to have 2. And then 54 breaks down into 6 times 9. All right, one more step. I think we'll be there. So we got a 2. 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. And 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. All right, so now we're going to circle the matching pairs. We've got a matching pair of 3s and a matching pair of 2s. And we'll underline the leftovers. All right, so we've got a 2 and a 3 that we'll take out front. So 2 times 3, which equals 6. And then left over is in our radical is that 3. So we'll bring that down, and our final answer will be 6 square roots of 3. Okay, pretty straightforward. Hopefully you're getting those down quite well. And it's just a little more concise way to write this square root. Okay, number two, we've got this question. Find the length of the missing side of a right triangle. So we're looking for B, which is uh, one of the sides. We remember from the Pythagorean theorem that A squared, or 12 squared, plus B squared, has to equal... C squared, which in this case is 20 squared. So if we do our calculations, we're going to have 144 plus B squared equals 400 squared. Or just, excuse me, 400. So now we need to remove that 400 or that 144 from 400 or remove it, or take it across the equal sign and cancel it out, like that. So we subtract 144 from each side. And as we do that, we end up with a nice number. 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So 256. So we have b squared equals 256. So to find uh, b, we just do the square root of both sides, and that will give us b equals, and we take our calculator, plug in the number uh, <clears throat> 256, and then do the square root. So that comes out to be 16. So our answer up here would be 16. All right, now we've got the find the height of the tree. So we've got a little triangle, and it's very similar to the one that we just did. We, we, we know the diagonal, which is C, and we know the bottom, which is we sometimes call B for base. And we're looking for A, or the altitude over here. So let's go ahead and set this up. A squared plus 25, which is b squared, equals 169, which is c squared. So this is b squared and c squared. So to find a squared, we've got to do a minus 25 on both sides. And that comes out to be 4, 4, and 144. Oh, so a squared equals 144, and I know that if I unsquare a squared, I get a. And if I unsquare 144, I get 12. So this would be 12 feet, 12 feet tall on that um, tree. Okay, very nice. All right, moving on then. So we know that the Pythagorean theorem says that for every single right triangle that you can come up with, 
the length of the two shortest sides squared and added together is equal to the length of the longest side or the hypotenuse squared. So that relationship will always exist in a right triangle. So then we have this, what we call the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, which means that if I, if I get three sides, if I square each of them, and the two smaller ones squared do not equal the larger one squared, then I actually don't have a right triangle. So I can kind of prove it in that way, and it's called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So let's, uh, let's try a couple of problems like that. So determine if the following lengths of the triangle will make a right triangle. So in order to do that, we, we're going to square each side. So set it all up. We got 25 squared, 24 squared, and 7 squared. And then the, the other one squared, the decimal squared. So the first one I get, for 25 squared, I get 625. For 24 squared, I get 576. And for 7 squared, I get 49. And then the other numbers all squared look like that. So then the next question is, do the two smaller numbers add up to the larger number? So we've squared all the numbers, and the two smaller numbers would have to be the A and the B in order for this to work out the right way. So we just basically add those two numbers together. And if they equal that number, then we are in good shape. If not, then this is not a right triangle. So 576 plus 49 well, let's try it out. 576 plus 49 equals 625. So that does, in fact, equal 625. So does this, uh, do, do these sides make a right triangle? The answer then is yes. What about over here? Well, let's take a look. I hope we jumped a little too far. So we're going to, We've got to add these two smaller sides together. Grab our calculator. We'll do 17.64 plus 60.84, and that equals 78.48. And so these 78.48 does not equal 88.36. So this does not make up the sides of a right triangle. It's just as simple as that. All right, so let's try a couple of others. We got um, 8 squared, 8.9, and 3.9. So does 8 squared plus 3.9 squared equal 8.9 squared? Well, let's check it out. I know that 8 squared is 64. That's one I've practiced a few times. But what about 3.9 squared? So 3.9 squared, that equals 15.21. 15.21. And then what does 8.9 squared equal? So 8.9x squared, that equals 79. Point twenty one, And when I look at these two, if I add them together, sure enough, I get 79.21 on the left side as well. So yes, these do form a right triangle. What about over here? 11.2 squared. 11.2 squared is 125. Point forty four, and then uh, six point six, six point six squared is forty three, forty three point five six. So forty three point five six. So if I add that, if I add that number to the one twenty five point forty four. I get a total of 169. Now the question is, does 11.6 times 11.6 also equal that? 
Let's try that out. 11.6 x squared. Oh, nope. That equals 134 point something, right? So these do not equal each other. So this does not make a right triangle. Okay, we've got the last couple of examples. All right, so let's square all the numbers. 8 squared is 64. 12 squared is 144. Uh, 15 squared is 225. Does 64 plus 144 equal to 225? Well, let's double check. Grab our calculator. Now let's make sure that 15 times 15 does in fact equal to 225, and it does. Then 144 plus 64 does in fact add up to 208. So these two numbers does not add up or come out to be 225. So the answer is no, this is not the sides of a right triangle. Okay, and then our last one, we're going to have 9 squared. So 9 squared plus 5.6 squared. And that has to equal 10.5 squared to be a right triangle. So 9 squared, oops, 9 squared is 81. So this first one is 81. The next number is 5.6 squared. So 5.6 squared equals 31.36. And then 31.36 plus 81 equals 112 point, look at that again, 112.36. So the question now is, does that equal 10.5 squared? So if we do that, 10.5 times 10.5, and that equals 1,000, oh, something's not right. Let's try that again. 10.5x squared, that equals 110.25, so it's a little bit uh, smaller than this first two, so this does not equal each other, so it is not a right triangle. So the answer on that one is no as well. All right, so that's the converse of Pythag to the Pythagorean theorem. Just remember to square all the three sides of the triangle and see if the two smaller sides squared equals the larger side. If they do, it's a right triangle. If they do not, it is not a right triangle. All right, thank you very much.